Welcome back to Computer Networks, a systems approach. And in the last video, we talked about uh, applications and some of the this introduced this idea of layers that are going to uh, really recur as we talk about computer networks. Uh, and now what we want to talk about is if we're actually designing uh, a computer network or a computer network application, uh, some of the things that are involved in there. And if we want to design an effective network uh, that can be used by people uh, in useful ways, we actually need to have a number of stakeholders involved. So on the one hand, we'll have actually the people who are developing the application, so the application's programmers. So what they need to do is they need to think about what the needs of their application are. And typically this will be in terms of how much data do they need and what are the delay limitations on that. So if we're doing video conferencing, we need for you know, the, the delay for the video to come from one device to another uh, to be quite short, uh, ideally, uh, under a few hundred milliseconds, well, actually, ideally under a hundred milliseconds, so that there's no uh, real perceptible delay uh, for the users. Uh, or in an instant messaging kind of application, we might be able to tolerate longer delays. Or email, indeed, we can tolerate much, much longer delays, and the data requirements will differ as well. Uh, one of the things so in my research work that I do in terms of disaster area communications is helping application developers to understand how they can get away with much smaller data and with much more relaxed uh, delay constraints than what they might be used to on the regular internet. So this will depend really quite a lot actually on the kind of uh, application and the kind of network that you're trying to design for and in which conditions it needs to be usable. Uh, so that's some of the role of the application program. And of course, I need to, to write the thing at the end. We're talking about the design process. So now the network designer needs to take those part of me, those requirements from the application programmer and think about what is the most cost effective network that they could create that will actually uh, be able to provide and satisfy those requirements identified by the, um, uh, the application programmers. So they're taking the needs of the application programmer and turning those into specifications for what a network might look like. Uh, and then the network provider uh, is really going to be thinking about, well, if I have to run some kind of network, uh, how can I make that easy to manage? Uh, and, you know, rather than it being, you know, insanely complicated or requiring lots of, uh, of effort to do. So some of the things around, you know, how automatically can a network configure itself and reconfigure itself if the network environment changes or the application usage uh, changes. And so again, in the kind of uh, disaster response networks uh, that I'm involved in creating, uh, all three of these elements actually come together in terms of how can we really minimize the data requirement because we know bandwidth will be scarce. How can we make systems that actually can tolerate very great delays and intermittent connections and those sorts of things and be totally self-organizing and self-configuring so that there is very little management required of the network. Uh, but in other situations, so for example, we're looking at you know, a, a Google or a Facebook running uh, the kinds of services that they run on the internet at massive scale, it can be a very different uh, kind of calculus involved. They actually can say, well, actually, we really do want very minimal delay so that the service is much more interactive. And we don't care if we need to have large numbers of people administering uh, a network service or a network so that it can deliver these really good outcomes. So. The requirements are going to differ significantly based on uh, the target user base, the target use case uh, or use cases and context in which uh, the network system needs to operate. And so this is why it's really important to get the stakeholders involved uh, in the process so that you can actually design a system which is actually going to work for them rather than against them and to be as cost effective uh, and mission effective uh, as it possibly can be. So that's it uh, for this video. Again, leave comments uh, below if you have any questions or, or thoughts that you want to share, and uh, we'll try and respond to those as we can. Thank you.